Hello everyone, it's Matt from Akuma Mods, back again with our review of the Creality Ender 3 V2. So, just to start off, as many of you may or may not know, me and Creality's history with uh, specifically the Ender 3 line uh, has been disastrous, to say the least. Um, I got a Creality Ender 3 for my secondary printer, and it was just as terrible as my first printer, which was a knockoff ANET that took me about nine hours to build. Now, uh, obviously this one was really easy to build, but um, it was just a disaster. Couldn't get it to level, couldn't get it to print, or when it did print, it would print one print, and then the next print it would be like shifting layers. It would be all kinds of weird stuff. And it happened with several units I had. So uh, usually I would just end up buying used printers that were destroyed, making sure that they print, and flipping them um, when it came down to it. I, I usually didn't have these printers in my hand. As you guys may or may not know as well, I'm more of a GTEC A10 fan. But we'll leave that for something completely different. Right now we're going to be talking about the Creality Ender 3 V2. So what's so special about the Ender 3 V2? Well, it does have a 32-bit board. To be in all honesty, it's not something that is super impressive unless you're flashing custom firmware. Then you can add a bunch of different stuff. But in its stock form, it's really no different than a regular Ender 3 or an Ender 3 Pro. Um, the same goes for the hot end. The entire unit itself is based off of the same Ender model that we all know and grown to, I guess, love in some ways. Um, same with the motors, same with the extruder, same with the belts. Pretty much everything is exactly the same. The only thing that they really changed, excuse me, on this model from the regular model <clears throat> is... They added a fancy screen. Um, whether or not it is a better upgrade, eh, that's, that's more or less like a visualization thing. Otherwise, it, it's, it's had some issues. And I'll, I'll go over the issues in a little bit here. Um, the other added things that they have are um, the belt adjustment uh, pieces or knobs, whatever you want to call it. Um, those are nice additions on any printer, so I absolutely love that they did that. Um, they redid the fan shroud. That's all they really did to the, the hot end portion. Uh, but the fans and the hot end are exactly the same as an Ender 3 and an Ender 3 Pro. Uh, I would probably put money on it that you can take a fan shroud to cover um, off of an Ender 3 B2 and probably be able to put it on your Ender 3. Um, you might have to swap out the actual carriage part because the holes are a little different, but for the most part, you can it, you can make an Ender 3 into an Ender 3 V2. So, um, and that's really all that has been upgraded on this. Uh, and you know, I guess you could say they added a little drawer to it and they moved the power supply down to the bottom. That's about one of the few pluses. So, in my opinion, in, on this machine, there's there's two, maybe three pluses on here. Um, one of the pluses, moving the power supply to the bottom of the machine. Uh, what this is a good upgrade for um, over the original Ender and Ender 3 Pro is the fact that the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Pro they had their power supplies mounted above the extrusion rail, so it would actually float. So all your weight would actually be on the right side of this, which, as some may have noticed, causes a saggy gantry issue. Um, just a little slight bit it causes it, and it does cause some um, frame, uh, I, w I don't want to say shearing, but like bending, more or less. Um, it's very minute, but it does happen over time. Uh, especially if you're not, um, you know, taking care of your machine and, you know, going through basic maintenance every six to seven months, depending on your usage. Uh, but that's usually what you should be doing, regardless of how often you're using it anyway. 
just to give a quick once over and make sure all the nuts and bolts are tight, more or less bolts, <clears throat> and whatnot. So, um, yeah, so the other um, plus sides to this are, like I said, the, uh, the knobs to adjust the belt, the belt tensioner knobs. Those are a really, really nice upgrade. Again, it's kind of a mood point because really you can upgrade any Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro pretty easily by just doing a, you know, eight hour print, I think it is, to make one of those. I did it with my original Ender 3 and I did it in regular PLA and it worked perfectly fine and it still got it on the machine um, that I sold it to uh, the guy. So, um, issues. Right off the bat, uh, if you guys have watched my unboxing video, you noticed that there was uh, an issue with the fan on the board side. Uh, that has to do with there's something rattling around in there. Now, I haven't had time to take it apart and look inside there. I will um, do that in a little bit, but, you know, it's just been kind of cranking away doing some prints. Um, the other thing is the hot end fan. The hot end fan started having issues the second day I had it. Um, it was like the second or third print actually in. And it wasn't even long prints. So I think it had like maybe 12 hours of printing in it. And it already had a dying fan. So I ended up removing the fan and kind of lubricating the, the inside gears and everything. And making sure that everything's good. And it turned out it was a seating issue between the fan and, and the housing that it sits in. And so we just had to prop it out a little bit. And now, it's, as you can hear, it's perfectly fine. Um, so really, those are kind of small problems, easy fixes. Um, it's really predictable, I guess I can say, for my experiences with Creality uh, Ender 3 machines. But... We'll, we'll just more or less leave it at that. Um, Printing-wise, it's been kind of rocky. Um, I actually finally got a dial down. It's been printing perfectly fine, as long as I don't move the machine in any way, shape, or form. As soon as I move the machine, it just goes all out of whack. So something is um, problematic with the entire uh, leveling of the system being um, squared. So it's probably something that I did. I'm pretty sure of it because if you watch my unboxing video, it was just a travesty of me putting this thing together because I'm not used to putting these machines together. I'm, I'm used to, like I said, the GTEC A10, which has this entire upper gantry and the gantry, or I'm sorry, the upper, the uprights and the gantry bar all as one. You don't put it together. It's just, it's like six bolts and that's it. So anyway... Um, so it's been printing okay, um, as you can see there's already a little piece there. Um, it does go out of alignment here and there, but like I said, it's more or less like if I bump it or if I'm too rough with taking the last print off. So it is very, very touchy. Um, again, it's typical Creality fashion, at least for me, so I have a big problem uh, with that. Um, the glass bed is really, really nice. It, it is a different texture than what they've been using on their, uh, I guess, kind of like perforated glass bed, you want to call it, or textured glass bed, however you want to, you know, talk about it. Uh, it does have a little rougher feel, so it kind of has a little more grippy to it, uh, I've noticed, because the last ender I had with, a, with their stock glass bed was just a disaster. Nothing would really stick to it. It was warped. It's terrible. Uh, so I had to use um, some hairspray with it. This thing, I've not had to use hairspray with it. It's been printing away perfectly fine. So uh, I have no issues with it. So um, <clears throat> really, that's not too much. Oh, I forgot one thing. One kind of funny thing. So um, obviously I went to go and put my own prints on here to see what we can, um, we can churn out on this thing. And uh, I go to remove the SD card, and I put it in my computer, and it dies. It literally wiped the entire SD card as soon as I put it in my computer. And I was like, oh, maybe it's something wrong with my computer. Maybe it's something wrong with my uh, um, SD card um, adapter, which I use a SanDisk one. I use a pretty high-quality one. 
Um, but nope, it ended up erasing the whole thing, and I have no idea what happened to it. I, I was able to see the folder with all the videos and all the instructions and everything. looked like it had a lot of information on there, but uh, like I said, as soon as I like clicked it, 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 it died. Uh, so that was really, really weird. Um, and I couldn't use the SD card anymore. It was, it was toast after that. Nothing would stay on it. So I ended up tossing it out and putting in a, uh, a little better quality SD card. Um, one of my SanDisks is in there. As you guys can tell, I'm, I use SanDisk pretty, uh, pretty religiously on my machines, uh, just because they work. So, um... Let's see, overall thoughts on the printer. Um, is it a better buy over a Ender 3 or even an Ender 3 Pro? I truly don't think so. All the parts that are on here, 9 times out of 10, people end up upgrading their Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro to this type of model with even better stuff that this printer has. Uh, and you, you'll still come either close to the same price uh, in total or you'll come in cheaper, depending on where you're going. I mean, you can go insane and put, like, a big tree tech board with a 5-inch touchscreen and, and AstroPrint and all kinds of crazy stuff in there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I really don't think it's worth it. Um, I know you guys can argue till I'm blue in the face about the 32-bit board and how it's so much better, but really, I don't think it's much better than the Creality version 1.1.5, which is an 8-bit board, and uh, they, they both are silent boards. The only big difference is, like I said, when you're going to custom firmware, um, you can add pretty much whatever you want because you have that, um, that memory that's in there, so that ability to, to process things. So, But otherwise, I don't see any difference between this and a regular Ender the, in terms of performance, stock for stock. So now, obviously, when you start modifying it, then, then we're going to be talking different stories. But, you know, some people might not do that. They just might need a printer. A lot of, do, a lot of people have these as uh, print farm printers, and they just they let it roll. So, um, really, the upgrades are minute, to say the, say the least. Um, you know, the, the, the screen is really, really nice looking. But again, uh, it was a little bit buggy, nothing major. It's just typical bugginess that you see with really any screen, so I didn't really chalk it up as an issue. I've had it on several different printers, whether it be in any Cubic, uh, the Mingda, um, uh, other Creality machines, you know. It's pretty standard. It just happens. You know, they, they just get buggy at times, so... I'm at least glad that it's not a touchscreen because then it would be really problematic down the line or even right away. So um, I know a lot of people like touchscreens, but when they come from factory, they're just their lowest quality. So they're, they're not meant to um, keep up with the demand of, you know, touching here and there. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, pretty much I'm okay with this printer. It's, it's definitely... A little better than my experiences have been with the Ender 3 uh, models that I've had in the past. But there, star, there is still some issues right out of the box, like I said, with, with quality control. Where they just kind of, you know, send it off and say, okay, it's, it's good to go. A.K.A. a quick check. Um, that's their QC. But uh, once I got it all sorted out and everything, we're, we're, we're good and printing away. I haven't really had any major issues with it uh, since then. You know, uh, it's been printing for about four or five days straight without any hiccups, any issues, or anything like that. Um, and just standard eSun PLA. So, uh, you know, nothing super spectacular out of it. Maybe if I throw some fancy film in, it'll start, you know, throwing a hissy fit. But uh, we'll, we'll test it out, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, for the most part, it's, it's a pretty good printer. Um, in my true opinion, is it worth the $280, $290 on Amazon that you can find it at? Eh, I really think it'd be a better buy to just get a regular Ender or an Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro um, and do upgrades yourself. Because A, you're going to have a better experience learning about your printer 
and what it can and cannot do and the issues that come with it um, with you modifying printers. Um, but if you want a printer straight out of the box that, that runs pretty good, looks nice visually, um, because let's be honest, that's more or less what this V V2 is, is a visual thing, you know, that that's really all I see it as. Um, one thing I was a little disappointed about is they kind of shrunk the dog. Like I was used to the big dog printing back in the day and I was like, wow, it's printing the, the base for the dog and then I'm going to see it. And then it started printing the dog and I'm like, what happened to the dog? The dog got shrunk. Honey, I shrunk the dog. So, anyway, it's been print, printing okay. Here's some stuff that I printed. I've been printing, again, more or less like safety stuff. Um, I haven't really printed anything big with it. I don't usually print big stuff with these FDM printers. They're just more or less like a churn and burn type printer where if I have something, it's going to just keep repeating the same thing over and over again. Um, so I don't really use them too much. I utilize bigger printers for, you know, actually printing because that's what I need them for. Uh, whereas small printers, this, this stuff is perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, um, that's, that's my whole thoughts on it. Um, is it a good printer? Is it a bad printer? It's kind of in the middle for me still. A um, little bit better than the original Enders, um, but that was, you know, Enders way, way back in the day. Their QC has come up quite a bit since then. It's still lacking a little bit, but it's it's much better than what it used to be. So take it as it, as it is. Um, I will leave a uh, some affiliate links in the description of the uh, the Ender Three V Two for Amazon if you feel like purchasing it. Uh, if not, I'll throw in some uh, Ender Three and Ender Three Pro. Let you guys decide. You guys can do a straight up comparison. Uh, just for reference, as of shooting this video. Right now on Amazon, I was just kind of browsing prices. So you have the Ender 3 at $215. You have the Ender 3 Pro at $240. And you have the Ender 3 V2, which is at uh, $280. So think about it. You buy an original Ender 3 for $250, and you throw $70 worth of parts on it, you can make it far better than this printer right out of the box. I'm just saying. I'm not trying to dog on the printer in any way, shape, or form, but at really, this is more or less just a fancier-looking Ender. There's no real true upgrades that I see that make it stand out above the other two, in my personal opinion. So that's my thoughts on it, and I'm sticking to it. So if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them below. I will try and answer them as fast as I can. I'm always on here. Um... And yeah, until next time, guys, happy printing.